and welcome to Lesson 9-3 on Classifying Polygons. In tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to classify triangles and quadrilaterals. So, as a warm-up, we talked last lesson about acute right and obtuse angles. And I'm just doing this quickly as a little reminder. Acute is when it's less than 90 degrees. This is when it equals, a right triangle equals 90 degrees, and if it's more than 90 degrees. All right, so again, if they ask you to um, classify 85 degrees, well, that'd be acute. 95 would be obtuse. 160 would be obtuse, and so on. And, oh, these are only right because it's exactly 90 degrees. So that's what we worked on before. Now we're going to move on to what is a polygon, or really classifying triangles. Um, when we talk about polygons, it's a closed plane figure with at least three sides. It can have more than three sides, but it has to have at least three. So taking a look at all my shapes below, well, are there figures that don't have three sides or there's an issue with it? And well, right away, I know I can crack out this circle here because it doesn't have any side. Same with this one. All right, because again, it's rounded on one side. And then finally, because of this piece, it is not considered a polygon because there's just one leftover little part. So, there are different types of triangles and how we can measure them. One way we can measure them is by their angles. And again, that brings in the right, obtuse, and acute. And it works really nicely for these. When we talk about an acute triangle, every single angle in the triangle is less than 90 degrees. All right, and that's all of them. Now, when we talk about a right triangle, that means exactly one side is 90 degrees. So here, again, usually you'll see a box. If there's one side with a 90 degrees, or that is 90 degrees, or it has that box, it's automatically a right triangle. You'll notice with the other ones, those are acute. Right? And then finally, we have obtuse. Now, obtuse has one angle. So it has one angle that is greater than 90 degrees. And again, you'll notice a lot of times the rest of them are acute. All right? But you just have that one angle that is obtuse. So that's one way you can identify triangles or classify them by their angle. The other way to do it is by their side lengths. And we're going to be doing both of these next. So first we talk about equilateral triangles. And what's nice here is they have this base word, which really is you here, equal. So with an equilateral triangle, all three sides are the same length. They're all equal. So they're all two. They're all four. They're all 20. Whatever it is, they're all the same. An isosceles triangle, you can see I have two notches here. These notches mean they're congruent or the same. So an isosceles triangle has two sides that are congruent or the same length. So again, you can have four and four, and then this could be two, for example. That's isosceles. And finally, then we have scalene. And you'll notice, well, there's one notch here, two here, and then three here. When we have a scalene triangle, no sides are the same. All right? So all of them are different. You could have six, 3 and 12. Those are all scaling. They're all different. So now, classify the triangle by its sides and its angles. So again, we start with our sides. So we have to decide, is it equilateral, isosceles, or scaling? So looking at it, I see the side, well, it's a 6-inch, 12-inch, and 17-inch. None of them are the same, so it means it's a scaling. All right, so we did the sides. Now we do the angles, and we look. Are all the sides acute, less than 90 degrees? Is there one that's exactly 90 degrees to make it right, triangle? Or is there one that's more than 90 degrees to make it obtuse? And looking at it, they have a nice and bold here in red. It's 120 uh, degrees, meaning that it is an obtuse. So we have here a scalene obtuse triangle. And again, you normally start with its side and you do the angle next. So your turn. I have two here, and I want you to judge by the appearance on this case. And this one I might make a little bit bigger, so it might help you out a little bit. All right, 
So there you have that one that you have to judge by both its size and its angle. And then you have this one right here. So go ahead and classify them, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, let's go ahead and do this first one here. Looking at it, we start with the sides. And looking at it, my best judgment says that really none of them are the same. This is the shortest angle, and then this one would fold over, so that's different. And here, that's different as well. So this is another scaling. All right, but here, now we look at our angle, and I see this little square, which means up oh, 90 degrees. So it's a scaling right triangle. Okay, now looking at the other one. Well, here, again, we start with the sides, and I notice they have these little notches, which means, oh, these two sides are the same, but this third side doesn't have them, meaning this must be an isosceles, because there are two sides that are the same. So it's an isosceles, and looking at it, this angle right here looks more than 90 degrees, so I'm thinking it's an obtuse. So we have an isosceles obtuse triangle. There we go. Now we're going to look at classifying quadrilaterals. And here I have just sort of a map to help you out. All right, and we're going to start right up here. Now, a quadrilateral is any figure with four sides. If it has four sides, it's a quadrilateral. All right? But from there, it can actually be classified more. It could go this way. If that has exactly one pair of parallel lines, for example, a trapezoid, they have these lines, that are parallel, and only those lines. All right, if it has one pair of parallel lines, it's a trapezoid. But if it has two pairs, meaning right here, there's a pair, and right here, it's also considered a parallelogram. So a quadrilateral can be split up into either a trapezoid or a parallelogram. All right, from a parallelogram, it can be split up even more. A parallelogram, if they have four congruent sides, meaning all four sides are the same, it can be considered a rhombus. Now, if it has four 90 degree angles, so every side here is exactly a right angle, it's considered a rectangle. And finally, a rectangle can be pushed a little bit further, as with the rhombus, if both of these things are true. So, not only like a rectangle does it have four right angles, but like a rhombus, it has sides that are all congruent for the same length. So there you go. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term before that a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle can't necessarily be, or a rectangle can't be a square. This is why, because a square is a step further. So a square, can, or excuse me, a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle can't be a square. So now we're going to use that map, and we might have to flip back to look, and that's okay. But name the types of quadrilaterals have, that have at least one pair of parallel lines. Look, so looking back, I need at least one pair of parallel lines. And I know, well, we start with a quadrilateral, and I could go to a trapezoid. Oh, that has one pair of parallel lines. So it could be a trapezoid. Let's see. A uh, parallelogram has two sets, so that definitely counts. Let's see, going back, well, let's see, a rhombus has four congruent sides. So, yeah, and then taking a look, that is parallel, that is parallel, and so on. So, yep, a rhombus, as would a rectangle, and a square. So very many quadrilaterals here have at least one pair of parallel lines. Then we have this one. Name the types of quadrilaterals that have four right angles. So they have to have four right angles. So go ahead, flip back and forth if you need to, and solve this one. And when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So go ahead, pause me now. All right, so in this case, we need the uh, shapes that have four right angles. And looking at it, it can't be a rhombus because it doesn't talk, doesn't talk about 90-degree angles. 
but a rectangle and a square both do. So in this case, the only ones that have them are rectangles and squares. And then finally, we have regular polygons. When we talk about a regular polygon, it's a figure that has all the sides and all the angles are congruent. So all the angles are the same and all the sides are the same length as well. Okay, so for example, these all have the same length, as does this in this pentagon and so on, as in this square. So all the sides and all the angles are the same. So we can use that now with the word problem. A contractor is framing the wooden deck shown below in the shape of a regular dodecagon or 12-sided figure. Write a formula to find the perimeter of the deck. Evaluate the formula for a side length of 3 feet. All right, now we have to do a few things. First, I know I have to find out what I'm supposed to do. Well, I need to write a formula for the perimeter. So I have to think back, well, what is perimeter? That's when you find the distance around a figure. All right. So first it says just write a formula to find the perimeter of the deck and then evaluate it. So I have to figure out what can I use here. Because I don't know the length quite yet, yes I know I'm going to stick in three feet, but first they want just a generic formula. So I'm going to call each side x. So I can list x all the way around. And how do I find the perimeter? Well, I add. So I could do perimeter and then do x 12 different times. But that's a lot of work, and you know what? Your hand's going to get very tired if you have to do it that way. I'm only at 7, 8. Yeah, this is a lot to do. So I have x plus x plus x plus x and so on. That's one way to write it. Or, using what we know, well, we have the perimeter is equal to 12 of the sides. If I know the length of one side, times it by 12, and that gives me the perimeter of the whole figure. So this is what they really want. And then from there, well, find the perimeter, if we said instead of x, this was 3. And again, you could do comp by 3s, or just stick it in here. 12 times our 3 here, and we get 36 feet for a perimeter. There we go, that's our lesson for tonight. Tonight we talked about how we can classify triangles, and then we took it a step further and did quadrilaterals. You have a great night. I will see you all tomorrow.